Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairwoman, and witnesses for appearing before our committee today. I first want to take a moment to say that my constituents from Utah have some serious concerns about the Department of Justice suing Texas because the Biden administration doesn't like one of his laws. Utah signed an admin's brief in United States versus Texas. I'd like to request an unanimous consent to enter that brief into the record. I'd like to share my perspective on the devastating impact abortion has had on my community. In June of this year, I wrote an op-ed on why Planned Parenthood is the greatest threat to black lives in America. I'd like to request an unanimous, unanimous consent to enter that full piece into the record. Here's a few highlights. The highlight in a recent weekend ed 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 edition of the New York Times was stark. I'm the head of Planned Parenthood, We've done making excuses for our founder. The author of this article, Alexis Miguel Johnson, say that her organization, the largest provider of abortion in the United States and perhaps the world, would have to reckon with Mar uh, Margaret Sanger and her associate, association with the white supremacist groups and eugenics. It's important to acknowledge Sanger's views on Planned Parenthood's use of birth control to eliminate those she considered nothing but human weeds. What does targeting a race as human weeds look like? Black women represent 6% of America's population, and yet make up 40% of women who end up on, on the operation table of a wealthy abortionist. 20 million black babies have been exterminated over the last 40 years, represents 40% of my race that's viewed by the left as nothing but human weeds. In the civilized country, the death of 40 million black innocent babies in combination with over 60 million babies of all race and colors will be considered genocide. The left considers this medical care and the death of all this, these innocents is love and blessings. The left preaches us about equity. Where's the equity when the lowest percentage of Americans are killed at a higher rate than the majority race? Today in the US, the abortion rate of American, uh, African American women is over three times that of white women. From 2000 to 2010, African Americans as a percentage of the total US population dropped one seventh. We have a party that actually believes that stopping the killing of black babies at a rate three times more than white babies is not fair to black mothers. No, my friends, black babies are not human weeds, and our community should, celebrate, should not celebrate throwing them away. Black mothers would love their children as much as white mothers if they're only taught at a young age that it's not cool to abort them. If they were taught that it is not liberation and should not go there to go, liberating them from going through the hassle and innocence of being a mother. 20 million children destroyed in 40 years. How many of them, if allowed to live, would have solved our climate crisis? Been the, uh, the, the next Martin Luther King, the Unite All Races, another Ben Carson, leading our nations against fights of cancer and heart disease. What a crushing loss to our national and community well being. And no, losing our precious babies for billions in profit to an abortionist industry is not love and blessings to the mother and the lives, to the lives of the millions that have been destroyed, mothers and babies. Clarence Thomas, Justice Clarence Thomas, may have put it best when he wrote that the te technological advances have only heightened the eugenics potential uh, for abortion, as abortion now can be used to eliminate children with unwanted characteristics. This law and other laws like it promote the state's compelling interest of preventing abortion from becoming a tool of modern day eugenics. I'm the father of six children, 15 grandchildren. My life has been one, like everyone in here, has gone up and down, from being a Super Bowl champion to losing everything, going through bankruptcy, living in a one-bedroom apart, basement apartment in Brooklyn with four kids. We chose to have another two because we, we believed in the blessings of the eternal life of families. I'm going to give a message to those who are listening do not listen to the dark message of hopelessness. The tough times you might go through are temporary. The life that you give to your children, what you build as a family is eternal. There's nothing like the memories I now share and believe me, it's not playing on a football field that makes a difference today. It's watching my five, my six kids, my 15 grandkids, how tight, how close we are, how much we enjoy our company and the pride I have in what they've done to raise their kids. That's the legacy of moms and dads. That's the legacy of many moms will never ever have because they've been taught that killing their baby is cool. 
and many dads would not have because they've been taught it's better to go to abortion center than man up and take care of their child. Vote for life, live your life. I give back my time.